Jensen is taking a shower when a mass killer bursts into his house. However, he goes downstairs and sees his wife murdered. As soon as he turns his head, pepper spray is shot into his face. After the killer gives him the two fingers, he passes out. When Jensen wakes up, he is surrounded by police. Since he still holds the bloodstained knife in his hand, he is charged with the murder of his wife and sentenced to 50 years in prison. He is being held in a private prison. The prison is under 24-hour security and was even built on the ocean with only one route in and out to prevent prisoners from escaping because all the prisoners here are felons with blood on their hands for the most heinous crimes. On this day, Jensen wanted to have a quiet breakfast, but someone got on his nerves. Not only did he spit on his plate, he verbally abused his wife. How could they have known they messed with the wrong person this time? After the fight, Jensen was brought before Hennessy. Hennessy is a dictator who runs the prison. She orchestrated the race to turn the inmates into assets. Death row inmates are transformed into race car drivers to kill each other in modified race cars. If a prisoner can win five races in a row, he will be pardoned and released from prison. High definition, video cameras are set up all over the track to broadcast the race live to a global audience. In the previous races, a masked driver named Frank had won three in a row, making him a cash cow. But in the fourth race, Frank suffered mechanical problems and was targeted by his rifles. Although he won the race, he died of his injuries. Hennessy has blocked the news of Frank's death to avoid a ratings drop. She desperately needed a prisoner with racing prowess to take Frank's place in the race. And Jensen was just the man for the job. Jensen was reluctant at first, but Hennessy made him an offer he couldn't refuse. All Jensen had to do was pretend to be Frank and win the fifth race and he'd be pardoned. The deal was struck. Jensen was excited to meet Coach and Liss in the workshop. The car is ready to race. The car is powered by a high-powered V8 engine that produces 850 bhp. The car is also equipped with nitrous acceleration just in case. The car's defense is also very strong, with 2 centimeters of steel plates and bulletproof glass at the front and sides. The rear of the car is fitted with 15 centimeters of solid armor. In addition, the car is equipped with smoke grenades and even petrol bombs, and two multi-barrel Gatling machine guns. That's a lot of toughness. Coach explains that the race is divided into three races. In the first two races, he has to eliminate as many opponents as possible and make sure he passes the finish line. Whoever wins the third race will be the true champion. Jensen's main rivals are five men. The Chinese-American 14KS, Grim, the pervert, Ka Chun Ka, who is a rough and tumble driver, Colt, a former professional racer, and Machine Gun Joe. In order to increase the revenue of the live broadcast, the Warren chose sexy inmates from the women's prison to serve as navigators for the racers. Jensen's navigator, Case, was one of the best and helped Frank out of many close calls. Jensen didn't try to hide the fact that he wasn't Frank from Case. He volunteered to take off his mask and start the race. As the lights begin to flash, the contestants are ready to go. The race is being broadcast live around the world, with more than 45 million people paying to watch. Jensen steps on the gas and takes the lead followed by the rest of the pack. They're driving around like crazy. Jensen loses the lead to fourth place as he's pinched by multiple cars. Case calmly directs him to take a shortcut to follow. Jensen hits the gas at the intersection and takes the lead again. On the second lap of the race, Hennessy orders the sensors to be activated. The sword triggers the gunfire. The shield triggers smoke and petrol bombs. Skeletons set off traps. Jensen's inexperience in his first race has prevented him from activating his weapon, but he's caught by the enemy behind the car. Even with the machine guns firing wildly, the driver's skills were so poor that Grimm found a flaw in him and eventually crashed into the trap. Grimm is so excited that he's eyeing Colt in front of him. Colt throws a steel spike to counterattack. Grimm's car was unable to dodge and got a flat tire. The car loses control and starts to roll. The 14K has fired a missile at the right moment. The car is blown away and crashes into the ground. Grim climbed out of the car door and started cursing at the camera. But the next second, he's hit by a car. There's still one lap left in the race. Joe's giant Galen is so powerful, and with Colt's persistence, Jensen's armor has become too much to defend. Jensen had Case unload the petrol bomb, and then used the passenger ejector seat to send it up in there. The petrol splatters all over the car. Before Colt could react, Case threw the cigarette lighter. Colt's car was instantly engulfed in flames. After a grueling battle, Jensen held on to first place. He thought he had it in the bag, but he saw Pachin Kao's provocative gestures were identical to those of his wife's killer. Distracted by this, Jensen was knocked to the side of the road by Joe. He finished in sixth place, and his car was riddled with holes. Jensen saw the horror of the race and said he would never race again. Hennessy was prepared for this. She pulled out pictures of Jensen's kids, and he was forced to give in again. Later that night, he came to the workshop in a rage, wanting to talk to Pachin Kao. But Pachin Kao was prepared. 
and Jensen was taken by surprise and tied up by the neck. Pa Chen Ka didn't hesitate to throw a big spanner at him and kill him. But the next moment, a huge pain came from his back. It was Liss who arrived just in time. While he was torturing Liss, Jensen grabbed a steel block and started to fight back. Ka Chen Ka, of course, is no match for Jensen, so he can only tell the truth about killing Jensen's wife. It turns out Hennessy was behind it all. Jensen was a race car driver. Hennessy did what he did to fill the void left by Frank's death. Jensen became enraged and dragged his exhaust pipe to get revenge. Unfortunately, the guards show up to stun Jensen and save Pa Chen Ka. The second race was held as scheduled. As everyone drives out of the start, Jensen drives into the abandoned workshop without a care in the world. He threatened to eject Case from the car to find out more about the conspiracy. It turns out Case has been an undercover agent sent by Hennessy to prevent Jensen from winning the race, so he can keep him in jail and bring Hennessy more money. In return, Hennessy would sign a decree releasing Case, but now Case has no choice but to work with him. Jensen then accelerates back onto the track to race. Instead of racing for first place, he's going after his wife's killer, Pa Chen Ka. He turned his car around and fired wildly at Pa Chen Ka until his car pushed through the shield and activated the smoke grenade. Pa Chen Ka's vision was blocked by the smoke and he crashed. When he saw that Pa Chen Ka wasn't killed, he reversed back and snapped his neck. Meanwhile, Hennessy is trying to make the race even more exciting by sending in a weapon called the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is armed with heavy firepower and starts shooting ammunition at the drivers. There's a lot of fire and explosions. Two riders were killed by the shelling. To add insult to injury, the Dreadnought was equipped with a capture device. Once the tires were punctured, there was no way out. The 14KS had no choice but to give up in the face of the bolt size cannon. Jensen and Joe are the only ones left in the race. Jensen decided to turn his enemy into a friend and contacted Joe for cooperation. The two of them were able to force their way through the skeleton activation trap. Dreadnought was smashed and exploded. Hennessy sensed the danger and gathered all the prisoners. She did this ostensibly as a pre-race pep talk, but secretly planted a bomb in Jensen's car. Later that night, Jensen approached Joe with a super daring plan. Race 3 is fast approaching. Hennessy is doing everything she can to stop Jensen from winning. She takes control of the sensor system and allocates all of her resources to Joe. Joe takes it all and goes after Jensen. Jensen's shields come off as he sees the rear armor of his car about to be pierced. But Joe reacts quickly to avoid the impact. Joe then fires a barrage of rockets, not at Jensen's car, but at a gaping hole in the prison wall. And then the two of them drive out of the prison. It turns out that Jensen and Joe were acting all along. Just to fool Hennessy. Hennessy was furious and set off the explosives, but Coach had already disarmed the bomb. Jensen threw down his spare fuel tank and stopped the pursuing police cars on the bridge, but the helicopters in the sky were still chasing them. Jensen took cover and Joe lured the helicopters to the pier. He jumped out of the car in the night. Turns out Case has a warrant for her release, so even if she gets caught, she'll be safe. With Case's help, Jensen and Joe are able to meet up and take the train to the far side of the country. On the other hand, Hennessy opens a congratulatory gift on her desk when she learns that Jensen has been arrested and the race ratings are at a record high. But she was soon shocked. Six months later, Jensen and Joe showed up in Mexico to open an auto repair shop. Case drove there shortly after. Jensen not only got his child back, but also gained friends and a new love. And that was the end of the film Death Race. Jason Statham's lead character is as good a fighter as ever. May excellent movies be watched by more people. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.